Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp channel and in this series we will be building Apple's Reminders app clone using Swift UI and Swift data. Now I've already done a series on how to build a Reminders app clone using Swift UI and core data but now Swift data is the future of on-device storage so we are going to tackle the same app using Swift data. So this is the end product and it is going to take us number of videos to get to the end product. This is a series. So we will get there eventually, but you're looking at the end product over here. You can see I have a reminders app. I have searching capability. I have different sections for today, schedule, completed, all, and different kind of list I have over here. So I can go ahead and add a new list if I want, or I can go and check out some lists like, hey, that's my UK trip. I need to do car rental. I can go ahead and add a new reminder, let's say, eat cake. All right, kind of a weird reminder, but you can do that. And you can also edit the reminder. You can add some notes, uh, sugar free cake. No, I'm not gonna eat sugar free cake, but you know what I mean. And select date, you can select time and so on. And then you can attach it, pretty cool. All of these things are available, all right. And if I go ahead and mark something as complete, it's gonna take a little while because it gives you opportunity to kind of like undo and then it marks it completed. And you can see I have completed. Now car rental is done and buy milk is done. Great. And I can add a new list. Let's say I'm creating a new list for fun and I'll assign a different color to it. I can actually save that particular list. I can also go ahead and do the search. So if I'm looking for car rental, I can do the search for the car rental if I'm looking for cake. So it say it's cake also. And apart from that, just like the actual reminders application, all of these things I can go there and see. Like if I click on today, I can go over there. If I click on schedule, if I click on completed or even all, all right? So I can do all of this stuff and we'll be building this using Swift data, all right? Now, before we get started, I wanna talk about a little bit about the sponsor for this video and the sponsor is none other than azamsharp.school. Azamsharp.school is one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Just go to azamsharp.school, check out the courses. I mean, look at all of these courses and workshops. Introduction to testing in iOS using Swift workshop coming up on April 27. But you can see I have a lot of different courses, the full stack iOS development, MV pattern reactive programming. If you ever wanted to learn Combine, I have a course for that. Swift Data Bootcamp, and so many more courses you can see there, all right? And apart from that, we have workshops. Now these are live workshops. They're like three hours long. And the next one, as I mentioned, is Introduction to Testing in iOS using Swift on April 27th. Then we have a Swift Data Workshop coming up and so on. Now, the best way to get access, at least what that's what more peop most people do, is to get access to everything is to just sign up for the plan over here. And you can see the plan over here is monthly or annual. Annual is a more popular one. So you get 22 comprehensive courses, 130 plus hour of video, 50% off workshop. So any workshop right now or in the future, you get 50% off. You also get a monthly Q&A. This is only for Adam Sharp Pro members. So on a Zoom meeting, one hour a month, you just come over here, ask any questions, career-related, technology-related, or just to have a good, nice chat. And that's perfectly fine. So check out adamsharp.school. And now let's get back to our reminders that clone in Swift data. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already created the project and this is called reminders clone. Let me go ahead and select iPhone something over here, iPhone 15, there we go, Pro. And right now we haven't really written any line of code in our reminders clone project. This is all the default code. And I want to arrange my code in a nice way. So every screen will be represented by, and I'll call it screen. So let's create our first screen, which will be my list screens. So I'm just going to call it my list screen, singular. All right. Actually, it should be my list screen. Okay. So we have my list screen and my list screen is going to be displaying a list. 
So if I go over here and check, we're right now focusing on, let me actually go ahead and open up Demo Pro. We're focusing on this part right now. We will get to the top part, which all of the statistics, we'll get to that. But right now we're only focusing on this small part of it. All right. So let's see how we can accomplish this. And we can probably go over here and also say that this is going to be toggle appearance. So we can see it in a different color. There we go, light mode. So we're only focusing on the small part of it. And by the end of this video, you should be able to see all the different, um, you know, the reminders that you have, like the list that you have created and you'll be able to also add a list, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing I usually do when I'm creating these kind of things is I start with hard coding the data. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna say my list, and I would say reminders, and I would say groceries, and you might say, why are you hard coding these things, right? I mean, why can't you just use Swift data? I mean, isn't it supposed to be Swift data? Absolutely, this is about Swift data. But I think what you want are quick wins. So you can, you can see what is going on, but you can see it like really quickly that how the interface will kind of look like. So the first thing I need is kind of like the title. So let's go ahead and add the title. And there are many ways of adding the title. I'm just gonna do it like this. And we can also say that the list style over here is plain. So I can say over here plain. Okay, that is fine. And now I can go through each of these items. This is a hard-coded list. Don't worry, we will change that and it will go to the actual, uh, it will be using the actual SWIFT data persisting to SQLite database. But right now we're just getting started, all right? And we need to display, if I pull this up, we need to display an icon over here and we need to display obviously the name for that particular list. So two things we need to display. I'm gonna use the H tag. And uh, for that, I can use an icon. It's called the line three horizontal circle dot fill. And you can see the icon, it's, uh, it's in black color. I mean, you can change it if you want to, that's fine. I'm just gonna go over here and just display that my list. Okay, looking actually pretty good, nice. And on the preview, I am going to use navigation stack also. Okay, next up, we can add a button to add a new list. So I'm gonna say button for action and a label. So what label should we use? Again, it's up to you. I'm just gonna call this label as adding a list, there we go, all right. And we don't really want the list row separator for our button, so I can say hidden. Now, if you want it, you can, you can use it, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna mark it a little bit hidden, as you can see, all right. Okay, so we have the add list and we have the button, that is also good. The next thing that we want to do is to, when we create, when we add, click on this button, we want to show a modal so that we can add a list. So if I go over here and I say add list, uh, this is the modal that we're working on, all right? Now this looks like complicated, don't worry about it. Uh, this particular control that you see, I've already created this control, it's called the color picker view, and we can just import this control and start using it. And if you want to learn how to create this control, I'll try to add, I'll have a YouTube video where you can see how to add this control. Okay. So we have another screen that we want to target now, and that is going to be, what should we call it? Add my, my list screen. And this is where a user is going to add a brand new list. So you can see that we have a screen over here, all right? Okay, so the first thing is I'm gonna replace the text with a V stack. We're just kind of like creating the overall structure. We haven't really created any model for our Swift data. 
and we have not even initialized our model container or the model context. I'm just trying to get a feel for the app right now. All right, just trying to create a very basic interface so I'll have something to work with. So here we go. We got our first thing over here. I mean, you can change your color if you don't like this color. Uh, I believe it's called foreground style and you can just change it to blue color. There we go. We will add more things to it later on. Next, we need a text field where a user can type the name of the new list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a state variable and I'll call it list name. We will go ahead and also add a text field. So here's our text field right now. Okay, looking actually really good. And now the next thing we need is a color picker view. All right, the color picker view is this, this part, this one, and it allows you to pick a color. So this one I've already implemented in one of the YouTube videos. So I'll put post a link. If I can find the link, I'll post it, but you can also search for it. And what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll give you the code because I'm gonna import it over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say views and it's called the color picker view, right? So don't worry, I'm just gonna copy a lot of stuff over here and I'll say color picker view. That's the one that I have written, but uh, you can write your own if you want to. Okay, so here's our color picker view and we can check it out how it looks as soon as this loads. We So the color picker view is dependent on the color, which is a binding. This means that whenever you select a color, through the binding, it's gonna tell the parent that that particular color is selected. All the colors are hard-coded. You can see it's red, green, blue, yellow. Then we go through this, go through a loop with all the colors, and we simply create you know, a Z stack with all these colors. And whenever you select a color, this will be on the tab gesture, it simply outsigns that particular color, and that's it. Now, the way that you use it in your app, so let's go back over here, is actually pretty simple because all you need to do is to create another state variable, var, and we'll call it color. Color equals to, let's start with blue, so that's gonna be like a default color. And since we have already added the color picker view, I can say color picker view, and we can pass in the color as the binding. So I can go ahead and pass that binding over here. There we go. Okay, then that's it. So this means that whenever we select a color from the color using the color picker view, the state variable, which is defined in the add my list screen, is going to be changed. It's going to be updated. Okay, it's updating, but what? What about if I select this, I want the color of this to be changed. Well, this means that the image, instead of using the foreground to be blue, how about we just use the foreground of the selected color? There we go, it's looking pretty good. All right. Now the next thing that we want to do is to create some sort of a toolbar that will allow us to either dismiss this particular view since it is shown in a model or a sheet or to save it to the database, save a new list to the database. So that's why I'm gonna wrap this with a navigation stack. As you can see, I'm wrapping it up. And now since it's a navigation stack, I should be able to use, well, I can actually use a couple of different things. Let's go ahead and give it navigation title and we'll call it new list. I don't really like the big title over here, but that's really easy to change. Just use the inline title or inline display mode. And there we go, smaller now. And the next thing we can do is add a toolbar. So let's go ahead and add a toolbar. We'll use a couple of different buttons over here. The first button will be on the left or the leading button that will allow you to simply close out this particular modal. Uh, and in order to use a dismiss, we can use the environment value, the environment. We're gonna use the dismiss private var dismiss. Great, so that part is done. And the next part will be 
to do the same thing, but this time we will have a done button over here. And it's not going to be leading, it's going to be trailing. So it's going to be on the right hand side. There you go. Great. Okay. So when the person actually clicks on the button, this is where we will save it. Um, but in order to get to this particular view, if we go back to the My List screen, I have to click on Add List. So what we can do is in the Add List or in the My List screen, I can simply add a state variable which is going to keep track of presented. I can check that. I can say is presented equals to true. And now I can say sheet presented, which is is presented. And I can say add my list screen. So this means that whenever we tap on add list, the list is actually displayed. All right. Um, actually, the list is displayed. One thing to note over here is that this particular list does not really have the title or anything. So what you can also do is wrap this in a navigation stack. There we go. And now the list looks really good. All right. Now, you know what? Um, I think this video is getting a little bit longer than I actually anticipated. I would definitely like to cover the safe part of it, but I think it will be a much better idea if I cover it in the next video because it's already getting super long, right? So I'll cover the saving and displaying of the my list, like a new list, into the SQLite database using Swift data in the next video. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be publishing that video quickly. So by the time you watch this video, the other video will also be getting ready. All right, so don't worry too much about it. I don't really want this video to become like insanely long. So that's why I'm going to cut it right over here. And in the next video, we will learn about how to actually save the list using Swift data to the database and also display all the list on your screen. All right, I promise. All right, thank you so much. Again, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and share to the channel and also check out azamsharp.school. This is, I mean, one of the largest catalogs for iOS development. You're going to love the Adam Sharp School and you're going to love all the courses that I'm doing and especially the workshops also. And you can see live workshop and all the courses. All right. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.